Good morning, students. I welcome you all, twelfth standard students, for this economic online class. Let us now go to lesson number twelve. introduction to statistical methods and econometrics learning objectives to describe some statistical techniques that may be useful to analyze economic issues to give a brief introduction to the subject of econometrics and its applications Timeology and milestones of statistics in global level. First of all, you should know what do you mean by statistics. Statistics are numbers that have been collected in order to provide information about something. Listen now. The term statistics was originated in the West. and was known by various names such as status in latin statistic in german statistic in french so it was called by different names in different countries it was originated first in the western countries it is said that godfried h n wall used the word statistic in 1749 to describe the political science of different countries so it was used by first by godfried h n wall and he used the word statistic in 1749 to describe the political science of different countries the first book to have statistics as its title was contributions to vital statistics by Francis G P Nielsen in 1845 it was to prepare a systematic study of birth and death related data so this book contribution to vital statistics by G P Nielsen was set up or prepared what for to prepare a systematic study of birth and death related data the monumental contribution that is the important contribution to the subject of statistics can be attributed to r a fisher who was able to apply statistics to a variety of fields such as biometry genetics psychology education agriculture and others so the first important person who introduced statistics to different various fields is nothing but r a fisher in the year 1890 to 1962 he introduced the statistics in the fields like biometry genetics psychology education agriculture and others he is known as the father of statistics so this man who is known as the father of statistics r a fisher father of statistics ronald fisher even though it is given in the box this topic is very important last day public exam this question was asked listen the fundamental principles of statistics were developed by the biologist ronald fisher who lived in england during the last century he studies in statistics led to the synthesis of evolution and modern genetics what's the meaning of evolution gradual process of change and development of something gradual process of change and development of something that's called as evolution and i hope you know what do you mean by genetics the scientific study of heredity the scientific study of heredity 
is called as a genetics. So this Ronald Fisher, he developed the statistics in England during the last century. His studies in statistics led to the synthesis of evolution and modern genetics. Evolution of statistics in India, that is development of statistics in India, how it evolved. History proves that during the period of Chandragupta Maurya, yes, who was he? The greatest king of Mauryan kingdom. There existed a system of maintaining vital statistics, including registration of birth and death. So this Chandragupta Maurya introduced statistics during his period for the purpose of registering birth and death. Such records, that is such birth and death records can be found in Kautalya's Arthasastra even before 300 BC. The book Anne E. Akbari 1596-97 mentions that. Do you know who wrote that book Anne E. Akbari? It was written by Abul Fazl. He was a court historian in the Akbar's court and this book was written in a language called Persian. So this book mentions a statistical and administrative survey conducted during Akbar's rule. P. C. Mahalanobis is known as the founder of modern statistics and also as father of statistics in India. First we have seen generally who is called as the father of statistics. Now this Mahalanobis is the father of statistics in India. Since 2007, 29th of June, every year he is celebrated as Statistics Day to commemorate his birth anniversary. So from 2007, the particular date that is 29th of June is celebrated as Statistics Day to commemorate. What do you mean by commemorate? In order to pay, remember, in order to make people remember his birth anniversary. Definitions of statistics. The term statistics is used in two senses, singular and plural. In singular form, it simply means statistical methods. Statistics, when used in singular form, helps in the collection, presentation, classification and interpretation of data to make it easily compressible. So statistics when used in singular form helps for collection, collection of data, presentation, presentation of data, classification, classifying the data and interpretation. What is the meaning of interpretation? An explanation or understanding is called as the interpretation of data to make it easily comprehensible. In its plural form, it denotes collection of numerical figures and facts. In the narrow sense, it has been defined as the science of counting and science of average. So generally speaking, what do you mean by statistics means? Statistics may be defined as the science of counting and science of averages. What is statistics? According to the Bodington, he says, statistics as a science of estimates and probabilities. Estimates and the probabilities is called as a statistics. According to Croxton and Cowden, statistics may be defined as the collection, organization, presentation, analysis and interpretation of numerical data. Characteristics and functions of statistics. Statistics are an aggregate of facts. Aggregate collection. Collection of facts. For example, numbers in a calendar pertaining to a year. 
will not be called statistics but to be included in statistics it should contain a series of figures series chain of figures numbers next statistics are numerically enumerated that is listing is called enumerating enumerated estimated and expressed third statistical collection should be systematic with a predetermined purpose the data that you are collecting should be systematically done what for with the predetermined purpose last it should be capable of being used as a technique for drawing comparison comparing the previous data with the present data the present data with the the futuristic data it has to be have the technique of drawing comparison these are the characteristics and functions of statistics next let us see the functions of statistics statistics present facts in a definite form it will be realistic form definite form it simplifies mass of figures it simplifies mass of figures group of figures it simplifies it facilitates comparison its data is useful for comparing it helps in formulating and testing it helps in prediction about the future it helps in the formulation of suitable policies based on its data next let us see the nature of statistics different statistician and economist differ in view about the nature of statistics so there are difference of opinion difference of ideas between various statisticians and economist some call it as a science and some say it as it is an art so some are saying statistical is a science some are saying statistics is an art tipet on the other hand considers statistics both as a science as well as an art so some says it belongs to science some says it is an art but tippet he says statistics is a science as well as an art scope of statistics very important five mark question listen statistics is applied in every sphere of human activity social as well as physical like biology commerce education planning business management information technology etc in all these fields statistics plays a very important role see first statistics and economics statistical data and techniques are immensely useful greatly useful in solving many economic problem such as fluctuation in wages prices production distribution of income and wealth and so on so statistical data and techniques are greatly useful to solve most of the economic problems the problems are changes in fluctuation means changes changes in wages prices production of commodities distribution of income and wealth and so on next statistics and firms that is industry statistics is widely used in many firms to find whether the product is conforming to specifications or not it is useful to find out whether a particular product is conforming to specifications or not next statistics and commerce statistics are life blood of successful commerce statistics are life blood of successful commerce so statistics and commerce are highly related 
market survey plays an important role to exhibit the present condition and to forecast the likely changes in the future so the market survey plays a very important role to exhibit the present condition and to forecast the likely changes in the future to take all this decision statistics data are very important next statistics and education statistics is necessary for the formulation of policies to start new course according to the changing environment there are many educational institutions owned by public and private engaged in research and development work to test the past knowledge and evolve new knowledge these are possible only through statistics so statistics is very very essential in the field of education what for for the formulation of policies to start the new course if it is needed so there are many institution which are owned both by the public as well as the private they are engaged in research and development work to test the past knowledge and to bring about a change in the new knowledge so all these are possible only through statistics statistics and planning so statistics is indispensable in planning very very important in planning tool is statistics in the modern world which can be termed as the world of planning almost all the organizations in the government are seeking the help of planning for efficient working for the formulation of policy decision and to execute the same so in order to achieve the above goals various advanced statistical techniques are used so in the modern world we can say it is a world of planning you take all the government organization not only government organization all the private institution even in schools planning is very essential for the efficient working and to for the formulation of policy decision and to execute the same in order to achieve all this various advanced statistical techniques are used statistics and medicine in medical sciences statistical tools are widely used in order to test the efficiency of a new drug or to compare the efficiency of the two drugs or two medicines t test for the two sample is used more and more applications of statistics are at present used in clinical investigation so statistics are highly used in the field of medicine in order to test the efficiency of a new drug or to compare the efficiency of two or more medicines next statistics and modern application recent developments in the field of computer and information technology have enabled statistics to integrate their model and thus make statistics a part of decision making procedures of many organization so statistics and modern application recent development where in the field of computer and information technology have enabled statistics that is the allowed statistic to integrate their models and thus make statistics a part of decision making procedure of many of the organization statistics with all its wide application in every sphere of human activity has its own limitations let us see what are the limitations of statistics first one statistics is not suitable to the study of qualitative phenomenon statistics is basically a science and deals with a set of numerical data it is applicable to the study of quantitative measurements qualitative aspects like empowerment leadership honesty poverty intelligence etc cannot be expressed numerically and statistical analysis cannot be directly applied on these qualitative phenomena yes what they telling is right statistics deals only with the 
quantitative measurements it is not possible to check the qualitative aspects like empowerment you cannot measure you cannot take the statistical data leadership you cannot take the data honesty poverty intelligence etc all these cannot be expressed numerically and statistical analysis cannot be applied on these qualitative phenomena so it is useful only for the quantitative aspects next statistical laws are not exact it is well known that mathematical and physical sciences are exact 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 it is exact fact but statistical laws are not exact and statistical laws are only approximation exactly correctly we cannot predict it it is only statistical data are all only approximation third one statistic table may be misused statistics table may be misused statistics must be used only by experts otherwise Statistical methods are the most dangerous tools on the hands of the inexpert. So only experts can use the statistic. Inexperts should not use statistics. It should not go to the hands of the inexpert. The use of statistical tools by the inexperienced and untrained persons might lead to wrong conclusions. Yes. Next one, statistics is only one of the method of studying a problem. What is that? Statistical method does not provide complete solution of the problem because problems are to be studied taking the background of the country's culture, philosophy, religion, etc. into consideration. So these statistical methods do not provide solution to any of the problem because Problems are not solved or not studied by taking the statistical method. It is studied taking the background of one country's culture, philosophy, religion, etc. into consideration. Types of statistics. Statistics are of two types. Descriptive statistics. Inferential statistics. Let us see what do you mean by descriptive statistics and what do you mean by inferential statistics. The branch of statistics devoted to the summarization and description of data is called descriptive statistics. So statistics which is dealing with the summarization, summarizing and description, describing of data is called descriptive statistics. Inferential statistics, it is a branch of statistics concerned with using sample data to make an inference about a population of data is called inferential statistics. Concerned with using sample data, using sample data to make an inference to come to a conclusion about a population of a data is called inferential statistics. Inferring something from available data is called inferential statistics. Differences between the descriptive statistics and inferential statistics let us see in detail. Descriptive statistics, inferential statistics. Descriptive, it describes the population under study. Inferential it draws conclusion for the population based on the statistical result or sample result. It presents the data in a meaningful way through charts, diagrams, graphs other than describing in words. Which one? Descriptive. Presents the data in a meaningful way by means of charts, diagrams, graphs and other than describing in words. Inferential statistics, it uses hypothesis, solution, testing and predicting on the basis of the outcome. It uses to hypothesis, meaning solution, testing and predicting on the basis of the outcome. Third one, it gives the summary of data. 
inferential it tries to understand the population beyond the sample it tries to understand the population based on the given data next topic data what is data data is the information about facts or numbers collected to be examined and used to help with decision data is the information about facts or numbers collected to be examined and used to help with decision for example in order to verify your performance all of your marks are said to be the data so these data are the basic raw materials of statistics data classified into two broad categories quantitative data and qualitative data what is quantitative data quantitative data are those that can be quantified in definite units of measurement that can be measured definitely that's called as a quantitative data these refer to characteristic who successful measurements yield quantifiable observations example age income number of firms etc yes you can count you can collect and give the data in a quantitative manner next data qualitative data it refers to qualitative characteristics of a subject or an object a characteristic is qualitative in nature when its observations are defined and noted in terms of the presence these data are further classified as nominal and rank data so any data examples of this qualitative data we can say gender community honesty etc so any data which is measured definitely in definite units of measurement is called quantitative data any data which refers to qualitative characteristic of a subject or an object is called as a qualitative data this qualitative data is once again classified as nominal and rank data what is nominal data what is rank data nominal data are the outcome of classification into two or more categories of items or units comprising a sample or a population according to some quality characteristic nominal data are the outcome of that is the result of classifying dividing into two or more categories of the items comprising a sample or a population according to some quality characteristic certain units are fixed and data is collected based on it what is rank data rank data on the other hand or the result of assigning ranks to specify order in terms of the ingest integers 1 2 3 or first second third and so on ranks may be assigned according to the level of performance in a test a contest a competition an interview or a show so even in your class based on your marks we are assigning the ranks first rank second rank third rank and so on that is called as a rank data so based on your performance in the test a contest a competition an interview or any of the show ranks are being awarded based on the performance the candidates appearing in an interview for example may be assigned ranks in integers ranging from 1 to n depending on their performance in the interview if you take an interview n number of people may be applying for the interview so all these persons will be conducting a test and marks will be assigned and they'll be shortlisted and they'll be ranked from 1 to n so these data are called as a rank data sources of collection of data so based on the data sources data could be seen as of two types namely primary data and secondary data so this data can be 
divided into or classified as primary data and secondary data collection. So, those data which do not already exist in any form and thus have to be collected for the first time from the primary sources. By their very nature, these data are fresh and first time collected covering the whole population or a sample drawn from it. So, any data which is collected for the first time fresh covering the whole population or a sample drawn from it is called as a primary data which do not exist in any form and they are collected for the first time. Whereas, secondary data they already exist in some form published or unpublished in an identifiable secondary source they are generally available from published sources though not necessarily in the form actually required. See secondary data, they already exist in some form, already the data has been collected. They may be either published or not published in an unidentifiable secondary source. They are generally available from published source or sources though not necessarily in the actual form that you require. Example, data from CSO, NSSO, RBI, CSO, Central Statistical Office, NSSO, National Sample Survey Organization, RBI, Reserve Bank of India. See the classification of data in a diagrammatic form. So, data can be divided into two based on characteristic and based on sources. Based on characteristic, it can be divided into quantitative data and qualitative data. Based on sources, it can be divided into primary data and secondary data. Once again, this quantitative data can be simplified as primary data and secondary data. Qualitative data also can be classified as primary data and secondary data. Next topic, correlation. What is correlation? Correlation is a statistical device that helps us to analyze the co-variation of two or more variables correlation, co-variation of two or more variables is called as a correlation. Sir Francis Galton is responsible for the calculation of correlation coefficient. So, we can see now the types of correlation based on the direction of change of variables it can be classified as positive correlation and negative correlation based upon the number of variables studied it can be classified as simple correlation multiple correlation and partial correlation based upon the constancy of the ratio of change between the variables it can be classified as linear correlation, non-linear correlation. So, the types vary based on the direction of change of variable, number of variables studied, based upon the constancy of the ratio of changes between the variables. What is positive correlation? The correlation is said to be positive if the values of two variables move in the same direction. If the values of any two variables are moving in the same direction, then that correlation is said to be positive correlation. Next negative correlation, the correlation is said to be negative when the values of two variables move in the opposite direction. If it is same direction, then it is called positive correlation. If it is moving in the opposite direction, it is called as a negative correlation. Simple correlation, if only two variables are taken for study, 
then it is said to be simple correlation only two variables are taken for study it is called simple correlation multiple correlation if three or more than three variables are studied simultaneously that is at the same time then it is termed as multiple correlation so only two variables are study it is called simple correlation three or more than three variables are studied it is called as a multiple correlation partial correlation if there are more than two variables but only two variables are considered keeping the other variables constant then the correlation said to be partial correlation listen there are more than two variables but only two variable will be taken into account keeping the other variables constant then it is called as a partial correlation next linear correlation correlation is said to be linear when the amount of change in one variable tends to bear a constant ratio to the amount of change in the other when the amount of change in one variable the change in one variable tend to bear a constant ratio to the amount of change in the other variable those relation is called as a linear correlation non linear correlation the correlation would be non linear if the amount of change in one variable does not bear a constant ratio to the amount of change in the other variables is called as a non linear so linear correlation tends to bear a constant ratio to the amount of change in the other non linear it do not tends to bear a constant ratio to the amount of change in the other variables next concept regression last we have seen correlation now let us going to see regression evolution of regression the term regression was first coined and used in 1877 by francis galton while studying the relationship between the height of fathers and sons so this was coined by francis galton in the year 1877 while he was studying the relationship between the height of fathers and sons height of fathers and sons galton's law of universal regression was confirmed by his friend carl pearson what he did he collected more than a thousand records of heights of members of family groups he collected thousand records of height our height of members of family groups going to each and every family measuring the height of all the family members and he kept a record of nearly 1000 the literal meaning of the word regression is stepping back towards the average stepping back towards the average is called the regression it is nothing but the study of the relationship between two variables studying the relationship between two variables is called as a regression if y is the dependent variable and x is independent variable the linear relationship between the variable is called the regression equation of y on x so take consider y as a dependent variable and x as a independent variable the linear relationship between the variable is called as a regression equation of y on x the regression equation is used to estimate the value of y corresponding to the node value of x so keeping in account the value of x you have to calculate the value of y the line describing this tendency to regress or going back was called by galton as a regression line let us now see the difference between correlation and regression correlation regression correlation is a relationship between two or more variables regression means going back 
and it shows the average relationship between two variables. Next, both the variables x and y are random variables. But in regression, both the variables may be random variables. It is, it is not a must that it should be a random variable. It may be random variables. Third, it finds out the degree of relationship between two variables and not the cause and effect relationship. It shows only the degree of relationship between the two variables. It do not show the cause and effect. Whereas regression, it indicates the cause and effect of relationship between the variable and also establishes the functional relationship. Next, it is used for testing and verifying the relationship between two variables and gives limited information. Whereas regression, it is used for the prediction of one value in relation to the other given value. The coefficient of correlation is a relative measure. The coefficient of correlation is a relative measure. It ranges between minus 1 and plus 1. Regression coefficient is an absolute figure. It is a relative measure whereas regression is an absolute figure. If we know the value of independent variable, with the help of that we can find the value of the dependent variable. There may be spurious correlation between two variables in correlation whereas in regression there is no such spurious regression. Next point, it has limited application because it is confined only to linear relationship between the variables. The application is limited here. Whereas here the application is wider because it studies the linear as well as non-linear relationship. Correlation studies only about or confined only to linear relationship whereas regression it studies linear and non-linear relationship between the variables. And last, it is not very useful for further mathematical treatment correlation whereas regression it is widely used for further mathematical treatment. These are the differences between correlation and regression. Next very important topic, econometrics. What is econometrics? Amalgamation of the above three subjects that is economics, statistics and mathematics is called econometrics. Introduction to econometrics, origin of econometrics, where it started, who started it. Irving Fisher is the first person to develop mathematical equation in the quantity theory of money with the help of data. So Irving Fisher, he was the first person who introduced mathematical equation in the quantity theory of money with the available data. Next, Ragnar Frisch, a Norwegian economist and statistician named the integration of three subjects that is mathematical, statistics and economics and referred it as econometrics in 1926. The term econometrics is formed from two words of Greek origin, okobio meaning economy and utpo meaning measure. Econometrics emerged as an independent discipline study economics phenomena. So it is an independent discipline studying economics phenomena. Econometrics may be considered as the integration of, that is the combination of economics, statistics and mathematics. Objectives of econometrics. It helps to explain the behavior of a forthcoming period that is forecasting economic phenomena. It helps to explain the forecasting economic phenomena. It helps to prove the old and established relationship among the variables 
or between the variables so it helps to find out the relationship between the two or more variables it helps to establish new theories and new relationships it helps to test the hypothesis that is solution and estimation of the parameter now see the difference between the econometric model with mathematical model and statistical models models in mathematical economics are developed based on economic theories while econometric models are developed based on economic theories to test the validity of economic theories in reality through the actual data so models in mathematical economics are developed based on economic theories while econometric models are developed based on economic theories to test the validity of economic theories in reality through the actual data regression analysis in statistics does not concentrate more on error term while econometric model concentrate more on error terms regression analysis do not concentrate on error term whereas econometric model concentrate more on error terms next concept official statistics official statistics are statistics published by government agencies or other public bodies such as international organizations so statistics that are being published by either government agencies or other public bodies such as international organizations are called as official statistics they provide both quantitative and qualitative informations on all major area of citizens lives official statistics make information on economic and social development accessible to the public so it collects and gives information on economic and social development accessible to the public the ministry of statistics and program implementation mospi came into existence as an independent ministry in 1999 after the merging of the two departments department of statistics and the department of program implementation so the ministry of statistics and program implementation a new program came into existence from 1999 after combining after merging two departments department of statistics and the department of program implementation look at the given chart the statistics wing called the national statistical office nso consists of the central statistical office cso the computer center and the national sample survey office nsso national sample survey organization now known as national sample survey office is an organization under the ministry of statistics of the government of india it was established in 1950 it has four divisions sdrd survey design and research division fod field operations division dpd data processing division cpd coordination and publication division the program implementation wing has three divisions namely 20 point program infrastructure monitoring and project monitoring mp local area development scheme that is mp member of parliament local area development scheme besides these three wings there is national statistical commission created through a resolution of government of india mospi and one autonomous institute namely indian statistical institute 
declared as an institute of national importance by an act of parliament. Yes, students, we have come to the end of the lessons. So, recap, we have seen what is statistics, functions and characteristics of statistics, what is data, what is correlation, what is regression and the classification of statistics, difference between regression and correlation and also the official statistics etc. I hope you have understood all the concepts in a detailed manner and problems are pending in this lesson. You have some two problems in 5 marks and two problems in 3 marks. These problems will be taught for you by the max teachers. Okay. Thank you students.